The performance classes of modal improvisation at the Music Conservatory of Basel, Switzerland, represent a long-time research in integrating the skills of monophonic modal improvisation, as taught in India, into the Western music classroom. The course is not conceived as an introduction to the classical music of India. Rather, it distills some of the musical building blocks of modal improvisation found in the performance tradition of Indian ragas into a pedagogy that gives Western music students basic tools to begin experimenting with improvisation. For the music students of the conservatory, the course provides a hands-on experience with improvisation based on monophonic modal principles. It is, for some students, their first immersion ever into the practice of improvisation. And for the early music students of the Schola Cantorum Basiliensis, the course also gives practical skills that they can use in their analysis and performance of various genres of early music. These include monophonic liturgical chant, secular songs like troubadour, trouvere, and cantigas, as well as other repertories in which the concepts of monophonic mode and improvisation play an important role. The course also gives students a practical introduction to the pedagogy of the Eastern music classroom. All the skills are taught by means of oral tradition, without any written materials. This forces students to rely only on what they are able to hear, analyze, and remember in the moment. These skills, which for many students are very weak at the beginning of the course, develop quickly, and before long, the students are able to process larger musical ideas and retain them in their memory. Now variations from here. These skills are essential for becoming proficient in the practice of improvisation. In order to facilitate developing the essential skills of learning by ear, first the students focus their attention on rhythmic exercises. These exercises are based on a rhythmic language made up of syllables corresponding to the basic units of one, two, three, and four. Larger units are derived from combinations of the smaller ones. Once the basic units are learned, the students are introduced to the improvising mentality by learning rhythmic themes and variations. In this case, the rhythmic theme is comprised of the units of 3 plus 3 plus 2, or takita, takita, taka. The first variation of the theme shifts the position of the two-syllable unit 
taka to the middle of the phrase. This results in a change of phrasing and syncopation. The second variation moves the two-syllable taka unit to the beginning of the phrase, which then also creates a different phrasing and syncopation. In the third variation, the basic phrase is expanded, now becoming four groups of three and then two groups of two. Further variations are derived by moving the two taka groups to different positions, again producing a variety of interesting accents and syncopations. Later in this video, both the teacher and students will use some of these rhythmic variations during their improvisations. Besides imparting these important skills for developing the improvising mentality, the collection of rhythmic exercises instills an enthusiasm for learning together as a group. The Indian solfege system is made up of seven syllables, similar to the Western system of Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, and Si. These syllables are Sa, Re, Ga, Ma, Pa, Da, and Ni. The students learn the system with the help of various exercises. The key to this training is the age-old pedagogy of imitation. Simple phrases are sung and the students repeat them exactly. Each mode is revealed by showing its special characteristics, ascending and descending patterns, important tones, weak tones, cadence formulas, ornaments, and aesthetic content.
Once the rules are understood, the students are already asked to begin improvising short phrases to test their ability to move correctly in both the ascending and descending patterns. Naturally, in the, in the traditional system, you build up that repertoire by learning fixed compositions, hundreds of them, learning them, forgetting them, relearning them. And they build up a repertoire, and then when it comes time for you to take your, your own steps, you already have that material that's supporting you. But for now, we're, we're just fresh beginners on the path. We're just looking for a, a first step away from ascending, descending. So The next step in the process involves placing the monophonic modal elements into a rhythmic context. The students learn to organize the melodies into a theme and variation format. This brings them another step closer to developing their own improvisations. Come on, 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 come on,
sani da pomaga sagama sagama da ni sani da pomaga sagama sani da pomaga magale sa sagama Once the essential elements of this modal system are internalized through singing and rhythmic exercises, the students are given the opportunity to continue the research on their instruments. Students playing the violin and other unfretted instruments have the opportunity to continue their learning from a traditional Indian instrument like the sarod. This adds another level of subtlety and sophistication to their interpretations of the modes. As the students gain confidence, they are encouraged to begin improvising short phrases in a theme and variation format.
So let's just do some warm up phrases now. There is an ever-increasing demand for the student to learn musical material more quickly in the moment. This ability grows by working regularly with the teacher and also by developing a finer understanding of the modes. Then the student gets to the point where he or she can almost predict what the teacher will do next and follow as closely as a shadow. is for the students to become quick enough to listen to and analyze their own improvisations in the moment and then steer them in a variety of directions at will. So to be able to um, uh, take them com completely out of their normal context, um, not give them any written materials, and get them improvising uh, within a very short time, it's very gratifying because they uh, one can see that once they get over their nervousness about, uh, about being in the classroom without any written materials, and, and they, uh, quite often they are nervous, and they ask me, can't we write this down? Can you give us a piece of paper? And I say, no, you'll get a piece of paper at the end of the course. And then uh, 
when you won't need it anymore. Uh, but they get used to it, and they get used to the, the game playing with, with the rhythms, and they realize very quickly that they can remember and learn uh, a lot more material than they realized. And it becomes a, a challenge for most of them to, and a, a, and a, and a big pleasure to take part in this, in this process, which ends up that they can sit there, they can pick a mode, they know what the characteristics are, and they can just go and improvise. And uh, of course, this is not, they're not um, improvising Indian classical music by any means. These, this is, this is a, an experimental uh, repertoire for them. Uh, but the, the main thing is that it's coming from, from them. They're taking a, a, a set of rules agreements made that when I sing or play this particular mode uh, I'm going to obey certain rules and, and as soon as they miss one they hear it immediately because because they've gotten sensitized to all of these different hierarchies that make certain notes more important than others in certain modes and it's a um, it's a creative challenge for them. spot like this, it's not demanded on us, so we, we don't exercise it. Yeah. But it's actually um, easily developed, much more easily than we think, because we're musicians, we, you know, we, this is our material. I want to believe you. <laughs>